institutions that are not democratically accountable tend to be controlled by special interest. And that brings us around to the mortgage abuse settlement. A sweetheart deal for the special interest, if ever there was one. A $25 billion settlement of investigations of foreclosure abuses. The nation's five largest mortgage servicers jumped at the deal with 49 states' attorneys general. Oklahoma didn't join in. The banksters will now have to provide help to up to 2 million homeowners affected by the collapse of the housing market. The settlement sets new national standards for mortgage servicing. They're to be overseen by an independent monitor. Apparently the independent monitors we had before didn't do a very good job. But the new independent monitors, officials said, would end the frustrating runarounds by customers who tried to get their mortgages modified or make other changes. Yeah, this time I'm sure they'll do much better. The five lenders, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and Ally Financial, formerly GM, have committed to pump billions of dollars into programs to partially compensate people who lost their homes and to help current homeowners avoid that fate. At least that's the theory. The deal includes $17 billion for relief to about 1 million current homeowners, the majority of which would come through reductions in the principal they owe on their mortgages. Another $5 billion in cash would go directly to the states as restitution for foreclosure paperwork problems and other improprieties by the servicers in the foreclosure process. About $1.5 billion of that state money will be distributed directly to people whose homes were foreclosed from 2008 through 2011, and there was some operational problem, such as the, the banks lost their paperwork, or you were directed over to Department 32, or your paperwork was signed by Linda Green. There is no Department 32. Linda Green... <laughs> That's the person who individually checked all the paperwork for thousands and thousands of homeowners. That's the forged name that they used. Anyway, officials estimated hundreds of thousands of homeowners would get money as part of the settlement. The average check could be around $1,500 to $2,000. Settlement might expand to include other large mortgage servicers. And if certain terms are met over time, the size of the settlement could grow to more than $40 billion. So, are you eligible for some sort of a mortgage settlement? Well, you can go to the new website that was created to answer all your questions. That's nationalmortgagesettlement.com, nationalmortgagesettlement.com. And there you will learn that because of the complexity of the mortgage market and this agreement, which will be performed over a three-year period, borrowers will not immediately know if they are eligible for relief. Oh. Money Radio 1510, back with the review. We're talking about the uh, $25 billion mortgage settlement. And uh, they haven't quite figured out how they're going to work this thing yet. Go to the mortgage site, uh, nationalmortgagesettlement.com, and it basically says, eh, we're trying to figure this out. And for people who lost their homes to foreclosure, the settlement, they may be entitled to some small compensation, and they'll eventually receive a form in the mail instructing them what to do. And if you think you have a claim, uh, you wait for the form in the mail. Uh, but who's to say? No specific information for you today. And for borrowers who are delinquent on their payments or who are at risk of defaulting on the loan, help may include a reduction in their existing loan principal, maybe some other modifications. Uh, we'll have to see how that works out. Borrowers who are up to date on payments may be eligible to refinance into a new loan at current interest rates, which are at historic lows, but, you know, that was underway already anyway. Why did they have to make it part of the settlement? Settlement also helps um, make, helps to make available specifically 
uh, some loans for borrowers who are unemployed and uh, loans for members of the military. At least this is the theory. The reality is that there has been a backlog of foreclosures because of the concerns about liability for robo-signing, and this might just result in a fresh wave of people losing their homes. Yeah. A settlement for $25 billion may sound like a big deal, but of that, roughly $17 billion is credits for principal modifications, which will come largely from mortgages owned by investors, $3 billion for refis, and that leaves about $5 billion that will be in the form of hard cash payments. Another way to look at it, $5 billion is money from the banks. The rest is your money. The mortgage principal write-downs are guaranteed to come almost entirely from securitized loans, which means from investors, which in turn means taxpayers via Fannie and Freddie, pension funds, insurers, and 401ks. Refis of performing loans also reduce the income to those very same investors. Wow, guess what? The banks just screwed you over again. Now, there are plenty of reasons to hate this settlement. Some thinks some think that it may reward the people who lost their homes to foreclosure. If you lost your home to foreclosure, you might be getting a check. Oh, you're being rewarded for being a, a, a bad borrower. But let's not forget what led to this deal. It was the massive violations that came to be known as robo-signing. I'll tell you why I hate this deal. Because now it puts a price that the banks can pay for breaking the law. We now have a set price for forgery and perjury. It's $2,000 per loan. And this is a pittance compared to the chain of title problem these systematic practices were designed to circumvent. The cost is also trivial in comparison to the average loan, roughly 180000 so the settlement represents about 1% of loan balances. It's less than the price of the title insurance that banks failed to get when they transferred the loans to the trust. It's a fraction of the cost of the legal expenses when foreclosures are challenged. It's a great deal for the banks because... They're not having to go to jail for forgery. The banks have set the price for writing roughshod over 300 years of real estate law. And now that they know they can set a price on perverting contract law, you can bet they're going to do it again and again and again. By the way, Arizona's suit against Countrywide for violating past consent decree on mortgage servicing got folded into the settlement. Big gift for Bank of America. This moves it just proves that failing to comply with the consent decree has no consequences. Now, there are reports that the SEC may be about to launch some securities litigation against the major banks, but guess what? We're five years down the road. That means the statute of limitations is just about over. So maybe we'll pick up a little bit on the tail end of the last of the subprime problems. But you know what? We know the laws were broken. And now we know how much it costs to buy off our government. It works out to about three to six weeks' profit for the big five banks. Really? Five billion dollars, hard money. That's what it works out to. Split between five banks, billion dollars. Yeah, they make that in about a month. Like I said earlier, institutions that are not democratically accountable tend to be controlled by special interest. And now you know who wields the power in the USSA. It's not the politicians. It's not me. And it's not you. You're tuned to Money Radio 1510. Thank you for joining us today for the review.